Welcome to the first in a series of videos describing my theory of consciousness, which I call portalism. The concept of portalism is grounded in the framework of externalism and so is radically different from traditional philosophies of mind, as it is important to understand these differences prior to any examination of the theory itself. In this video, I describe the philosophical position of phenomenal externalism. In reference to the substance debate, the traditional branches of metaphysics are divided into monism and dualism. Dualist theories of consciousness hold that the universe is made up of two substances, those being the subjective or mental substance and the objective or physical substance. This is the thinking of the father of modern philosophy, René Descartes, whose substance dualism, also known as Cartesianism, envisions the thinking substance, the res cogitans, as being embodied within the physical frame, the res extensa. Cartesianism fell out of favor with contemporary philosophers due to its inability to demonstrate the relationship between physical processes and consciousness, meaning how the material and the immaterial are able to interact. For many philosophers, the subjectivity of consciousness cannot be denied. So in the attempt to explain this relationship, theories of property dualism began to appear in the mid 19th century, the first being emergentism, which is ascribed to John Stuart Mill. Emergentists hold that when matter is arranged in a particular manner, consciousness arises, consciousness then becoming a property of the physical substance. But emergentism has never been able to explain exactly how matter must be arranged, nor has it been able to explain how consciousness is derived from non-conscious matter. Where dualism holds that two substances exist in the universe, those being the mental and the physical, monism holds that there can only be one substance, and monist materialism holds that this one substance is the physical. Materialist metaphysics date back to the atomism of Democritus and came into prominence through the Enlightenment thinking of the empiricists Thomas Hobbes, John Locke, and David Hume. Arguably, the father of contemporary materialism is A.J. Ayer, a proponent of logical positivism and a member of the Vienna Circle. Materialism holds that only the physical substance exists, and more importantly, that nothing non-physical can exist. This position is in direct contradiction with dualism. In holding that only the physical exists, it falls upon materialism to account for mental states, including intentionality in the form of feelings, beliefs, emotions, desires, and qualia, qualia being defined as the something like there is to be experiencing of an object or state of affairs in the world. Materialism has the gift of intuitiveness, and to many philosophers, it just makes common sense to claim that if mental states exist at all, and not all materialists agree that they do, they must somehow be either a physical part or a functioning process of the brain and central nervous system. That is, something objective versus something subjective. Thus, there is no need to complicate matters by assuming that something non-physical such as a realm of subjective experience, must exist. So where does all this leave us? When we step back for a moment and observe these positions collectively, we find that both schools of thought, materialist and dualist, have one important feature in common. It's called embodiment. They both assume that the locus of consciousness is embodied in the physical substance, specifically the brain. But could it be as the inactivist philosopher Alva Noe believes, that they are looking for consciousness in the wrong place. We now have arrived at the juncture where it is time to step away from that which may seem to be obvious and open our minds to a different interpretation of reality. The fact is that no materialist position exists that can account for intentionality and qualia. Some theories reject that mental states exist at all, while others claim that an evolving science will eventually reveal the answers. The adherents of New Mysterianism believe that mankind will never have the capacity to understand consciousness. It falls to materialists to explain how consciousness can be derived from non-conscious material. But as the dualist David Chalmers has noted, if consciousness cannot be described in physical terms, then consciousness cannot be physical. And the dualists, who believe that mental states are ontologically separate from physical states, must still explain how the two entities causally interact 
and no property dualist theory, no matter how cleverly devised, has yet to satisfactorily demonstrate how that is done. Is it possible that after all these centuries of rejected theories and philosophical acrobatics in the unsuccessful attempt to prove that cranialism is the case and that the mind is the brain, that it might be time to abandon the comfortable dogma of mind-brain identity theory in favor of alternative explanations? Mind-brain identity is the assumption behind several materialist positions. Simply put, it holds that consciousness is no more than a physical process or function of the brain. Consciousness, therefore, is cranial, meaning that it is wholly contained within the skull, or in some other explanations, distributed along the central nervous system. Current neuroscience and neurophilosophy is predicated upon this internalist assumption. So if mind-brain identity is true, when I encounter a grapefruit within my immediate field of perception, my eyes detect the electromagnetic wavelengths of light reflected by the object, pass this information to the brain, which then processes an ideal version of the grapefruit in my consciousness. But if this is true, then I can never truly experience the grapefruit in itself, but only as an ideal image in my head. This would mean that I, as mind, am only an observer of the world and never a participant in it. Like a dolphin in a tank, gazing out upon some external reality, the existence of which I can never truly experience. But this is absurd, as perception is clearly not an isolated series of discrete observations. Rather, it is a holistic phenomenal experience of the total subjective conscious field, which presents as the world. I don't just perceive a cabin, I experience the cabin in the totality of its being in the world. There is no ideal image of the cabin in my head. Rather, it is my consciousness, my mind, that is in the world. Such is the claim of externalist metaphysics. Externalism rejects mind-brain identity theory. Externalism is a belief that the mind is not just the brain or functions of the brain, but that other factors external to the nervous system are required for consciousness. In other words, mind requires more. Externalists consider the terms consciousness, subjective experience, and mind to be synonymous. Externalist philosophies can be varied, with some claiming a possibility that external factors, sources, and determinants that lie outside of the body are required for consciousness, while others claim that these external factors are indeed necessary before any mind can exist. Externalist theories can be empirical and scientific, while others are a priori and abductively plausible. Some claim to be physicalist, requiring nothing that is non-physical, while others tend toward dualism, claiming that both the subjective and objective realm exists. Many claim that the locus of the mind is in the head, but that phenomenal experience takes place in the world, and the most radical form, that being phenomenal externalism, holds that the locus of the mind is entirely external to the body. All externalist theories agree that mind is existentially dependent upon one thing, and that one thing is the world. Portalism is a radical phenomenal externalist theory of consciousness. Consciousness is necessary for subjective experience, the something like there is to be experiencing of an object or state of affairs in the world. The world is necessary to consciousness, as it is the all-encompassing horizon of everything that can be phenomenally experienced. Therefore, in order for consciousness to experience the world, the locus of the mind must be in the world, where the subjectivity of the knower and the objectivity of the known become synthesized into a conscious singularity. Thank you for viewing this Introduction to Externalism. In the videos that follow, you will be introduced to an alternative interpretation of reality as I explain the theory of portalism and demonstrate its plausibility through cogent argument and abductive reasoning. My book, Portalism and Externalist Theory of Consciousness, is scheduled for release in early 2022. For more information, just go to the website shown here. And remember, the mind is not in the head, the mind is in the world. Hope to see you again soon.